Welcome to Rugby After Hours. I'm your host, Johnny Beatty, and we've reached the end of the pool stages of the Rugby World Cup here in France. I'm delighted to be joined by Jovan Niekirk, Nico Matawalu, and Jimmy Gopperth. Boys, it's been epic. We'll look back at the pool stages and ahead to the quarterfinals. But firstly, Joe, mm. back in France. It's been a long time away. What's it like to be back in France? Oh, it's been incredible, Johnny. Yeah, just thanks. Thanks for having me here today as well. Uh, great to be with you boys as well. Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic, man. Just connecting back with all my mates. Uh, it's been some of them I haven't seen for like 14 years. One of the guys I didn't see for a really long time. And and then just, you know, get, coming back to Toulon as well last week was also just really epic and just spending some time there at the Centre de Formation. A uh, really amazing uh, place that they've created, uh, put a lot of money into it and built up uh, Toulon rugby in a fantastic way. Uh, so it's just been fantastic being back. And the rugby, at the weekend we saw some more unbelievable performance against England. Japan ran Argentina very close mm. and Portugal pipping the Fijians. What did you make of that? Yeah, it was unreal. Like I think the Portugal ga Portugal game was the best thing for world rugby. Everyone wanted Fiji to go through, and I'm so happy they did. But the the, the scenes after the game in Portugal won was just epic. It was wicked, and it was like you love seeing those nations come through, and you know to win a game at the World Cup it just shows how much it means to them to to be there. Um, it, was, it was the game uh, for me. I just loved it. Absolutely loved it. And Nico, you must have caught up with your brother after the game. What was the mood? The loss, yes, but they go through to the quarterfinals. What's it been like for them? Um, I was talking to some of the boys too, uh, and my brother. Uh, they they feel upset at first. Uh, they feel sad. Uh, I think they they will regroup. Uh, their mindset will be different uh, this week, upcoming uh, to the quarterfinal against uh, England. And a little word on Josh Tuasova, one of the men of the tournament so far, during what must be an incredibly difficult time for him as well, personally. Um, I think for the same situation, I will like put it like in me too, when my dad passed away mm. and we have a seventh on the same day for me to fly over to the Hong Kong. Mm. And the one thing my dad said, if something happened, like someone died or... The only thing that you can return to them is for you to get your future right. He's, he's a strong uh, man. And in Fijian culture, it's boost your values and boost what you're trying to achieve. So I think uh, for the boys too, uh, as a team, as whole, I think that, uh, that will boost them to the to the quarterfinal, hopefully. Yeah. Well, for him and all the Fijian boys. And the, all the Fijian. I think everyone's delighted to see them through. It's an epic result for Fiji and for a different chain, a different flavour. It's just amazing. Um, mm. Joe, the South Africans, are you mm. disappointed they didn't top their group and get through as first seeds? Meeting with France, will that work out? How do you see that round going next weekend? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Ireland in that pool was was unbelievable. Uh, they play, they're playing some incredible rugby, 17 wins on the trot. Uh, unbeaten so they are really looking like the former side in world rugby at the moment they are they're ranked number one right um, South Africa you are losing to them I think it was a, a very high caliber game and uh, the intensity was right up there with any kind of semi-final final game uh, so yeah I think that they would take a lot out of that game and going into this match against France wow what a game we've got on our hands man like the French um, and their home ground. Um, a lot of people been speculating about uh, Dupont dependency. And um, yeah, man, I just 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 uh, observing their team and the way that they're moving and the way that they they're running things at the moment. They also look like such a slick outfit. So yeah, who's gonna? I would say this: if South Africa managed to play in the right places and suffocate them and potentially I would say also the first 20 minutes are going to be crucial because if France get their, their energy up and they start to feel like oh South Africa is not giving it to us so I would say like the physicality is extremely important for South Africa in those first 20 minutes just to give everything because if if they don't subdue them then the France will get the energy up and their the home crowd right so so yeah it, it's going to be a tough game but you know my heart always says South Africa so 
Cheerio, so, mate, how are you? Are you happy with the All Blacks' form and where they're heading to into the quarters, or are you a little bit nervous? No, I think they're they're in the the place they want to be. Um, before the Italy game, it, you know, hearing what was coming out of the camp, that that was very physical, um, and they they properly win at each other, and and to set themselves up for the game. And you could tell, like when they played Italy, they're on a different level. The 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 slick passing, the the rucking speed, everything was just so precise. Um, they were a little bit off it uh, the last game, just just the first twenty minutes. But you know, I I reckon South Africa are pretty happy they're not getting New Zealand. To be honest, <laughs> you know, talking to a couple, of, talking to a few of my South African mates as well, I think they're very happy because I think uh, when New Zealand come up against Ireland as well, wow, that game is just gonna be unreal. Um, Ireland mentally have actually got it over New Zealand mm-hmm. the last few rounds, so. That fear factor, is that going to be just off a little bit for them? Are they not going to have that fear factor, whereas a lot of teams do when they come up against um, the All Blacks? But I think New Zealand are going to come out proper hissing. Uh, they're going to be right up for this one. And I do think New Zealand are going to beat uh, Ireland. It's incredible. So Ireland, number one side of the world, go into this quarter as favourites. They also went down on tour to the ABs last summer, beat them there, won that. And the ABs come into this as underdogs, so it's going to be absolutely epic. Boys, awesome stuff. We're now going to preview the quarters properly with our first game of the evening. Agree or disagree? Cool. Right, so as we can see, boys, we've got the thumbs up, thumbs down on your paddles. We're going to give you some tricky questions, some easier than others, and you're going to let us know what you think. We ready? Ready. Let's do this. If South Africa win back-to-back World Cups, it will be the greatest achievement in rugby history. Joe, I'm coming to you first. Because you were in the stadium in 1995 as a youngster, which must have been crazy. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how would this beat the 1995 and what that meant culturally for South Africa? Yeah, that's an absolutely huge question, right? Because, uh, and a beautiful question. Um, In 1995, I was about 15 years old and I was uh, watching the game with a bunch of my mates and um, nothing in my life, in this life, had transcended the way that it did culturally and the creeds and the different nationalities and, and, and beings that live in South Africa. On that specific day, when Nelson Mandela donned the number six Francois Pino jersey, he transcended time and space to basically say to everyone, this is, we are one nation. We are all one. And saintly in so many ways, just like how that day stood out in every South African's mind, right? And up until this day, very, very day now, and how it transcended everything and how it brought uh, a nation together on one day. Everyone was just celebrating, right? And it wasn't, oh, you're black, you're white, you're this, you're that. It was none of that. It was all just the barriers were shredded. And so given that, you gave us a thumbs up. Yeah. So you said that if they double up and win this World Cup, that's going to trump that. That's huge. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is to win back to back. I think uh, I'm not sure how many countries have done that before. So, yeah, I think, yeah, just for the country itself, um, it would be absolutely monumental. Yeah. Awesome. Ireland will break the quarterfinal curse versus New Zealand. Give us it, Jimmy. Yeah, I think just New Zealand are slowly going under the radar. Um, it's all about the start for them. If they can get up, does that doubt start creeping into the Irish minds? You know, does that doubt of, oh no, here we go again. Does that come? And then does New Zealand just put the the hammer down and just be really re- uh, ruthless? And I think at the moment, some of their star players are really starting to hit some form. And, you know, I've got to stay with my home country, but I do I do really think New Zealand are going to get up for it. Okay. Playing two tens won't work for England against Fiji. Think fast. Oh, he's on the fence. <laughs> he's on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You've gone no. Oh, you've gone yes. Gone yes. You think it will work. So what do you think England need to yeah. do to get right this time that they couldn't do at Twickenham and beat Fiji? Against Fiji, if you have, like, you can read 
the the game well, like kicking game can kill Fiji. Uh, because some of the young young boys, but they they not experience like on the World Cup. But if they uh, because one mistake can change the game, right? One mistake can change the game. They kick for Ford and Farrell. That's what I was like afraid of. If they do, if they bring their A game, those two on the uh, quarterfinal, kicking games like uh, set up the forwards right, I think it's going to be a hard, 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 uh, hard game. Tricky. For yeah, tricky. Jimmy, I'm going to leave this one out of you because it's too easy. I'm going to go to Joe. Like mm. You've played with some massive tens, Springbok tens, with Johnny down in Toulon. Mm. Just how important is that role to any team at the minute? Oh, it's absolutely huge. And I think that like having, having the two options there, potentially it hasn't worked that well up until now, we could say, but, but uh, I know in the past it did work well. When Ford was playing, Owen Farrell were playing together, uh, 10 and 12 consecutive games together. So, um, yeah, so it will just be... It'll be down to that, uh, them coming together cohesively in that game. And then also just, uh, yeah, I think it can work pretty well, but it's just a matter of them feeling the rhythm and getting that rhythm together um, but because it has worked in the past. But I think there's been a lot of chat saying that, they, that they're that they not really sure if that has combination can work as well as if it was, say, just Ford or just uh, Owen at 10. Jimmy? Yeah. It's your position, mate. Yeah, obviously, I like two. I like two tens, as in the you can read the game, you can move the point of contact. Plus, it gets you extra contracts. You're delighted. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It, you move the point of contact, um, and that's what you got to do against Fiji. But do I think those two tens are playing well together? Probably not at the moment. Mm. Ollie Lawrence is playing really well. Manu's playing well. Joe Merchant's play, playing well. Uh, George Ford's playing well. Um, I would actually go against it and probably put. Ford to start and Farrell on the bench. Next one, fellas. Ardi Savea is currently the best number eight in the world. I don't know what it is. I don't want to. On form, probably, yeah. On form. On form. Okay, unanimous. Yeah. Okay. He is class. Like, you look at his skills, the strengths, his leadership as well that he's bringing. Who else is up there in the conversation? If Ardi's the best at the minute, Joe. I want to say uh, Dwayne for Merlin, but I don't think he's had as many like consistent games um, of late. But I, I definitely feel that you know he brings that X factor too. I, I'm going to be interested, very interested, to see the selection for the Springbok team, especially in the loose forwards, because you know he hasn't been playing all of the games. I mean, he played like I think two of the pool games. So and then you've also got Visa there. That so uh, you've got like two really top quality eights. Another one in that bracket is Talupe Falatai, who's mm. now out of the game, broken arm. He that's got a home. big loss. How big of a difference is that going to make in their test against Argentina? That's a big loss, eh? That's a huge loss. Like he's the talisman for them. Um, you know, not just as go forward, but as his again reading the game and where he pops up and you know the different parts of the game. He interlinks with the backs also, and then he's the carrier. So. I think it's going to be a huge loss for Wales. Next one. <laughs> the most tries ever scored at the World Cup is eight. Uh. Someone will break eight at this World Cup. For information, you've currently got Penno on six, Rizamit on five, Bundiaki on four. Ooh. Arundel as well, he's already on five with England, but he isn't starting. Do you reckon somebody's going to break eight at this competition? Got to be tight. Nico, who have you got? I've got uh, Riz uh, Samet. Uh, um, I think his athlete, he's like a try scoring uh, for for Wales. I think he's going to uh, break a record uh, uh, this World Cup, to be fair. He's a machine. Damian Penno, or is it going to be too far, too much for him come the next round? I just think, uh, I think tries might be few and far between when we get to this latter stages. Because of a change in style because and how it goes. Because of the pressure. And- you might see a guys just tighten up a little bit more and not as free um, and kicking for posts a lot more because mm. keeping that score, it's all about scoreboard pressure when he gets to knockout rugby. Um, so I'd love to see someone break it, but I think they might just come a little shy. Interesting takes, boys. Thanks for joining us. The next segment is Reddit and Weep. 
We've been searching through the Rugby Union Reddit over the past week. We've got the fans' takes, and we're going to stick them to you boys. You can let us know what you think. Peter O'Mahony, 100 caps, absolute legend. Cliff Moher, this man is a hero to my eight-year-old son who happens to be a Leinster fan. That's rare. We had the pleasure of meeting him last year. He was a gentleman of the highest order. It was a privilege for us to be there last night. He's in the form of his life, and if we have any hope of beating New Zealand, this man is crucial. How important has he been? Munster, Ireland, and to their chances this coming week in the quarters, to them advancing. Yeah, he's huge, and you can see the the leadership. And um, you know, he's a he's an aggressive he's an aggressive flanker. Like a he he's a niggly bugger, and and that's what brings everyone else along, and it allows the other guys, Josh Vanderfer and Doris, to free up a little bit. He's doing the hard yards. Yeah, you know, he's a proper old school flanker. Um, and the leadership he shows for Munster and for Ireland is going to be huge to that pack. And um, you see how much it meant to him to, to get that 100 caps. Um, it is very emotional. Um, and you, know, you can just see that a lot of the guys love playing with him. Um, we also found out the person that's been taking care of his lawn. Did you see this on Instagram? Oh, his mum. Oh, At a sign, yeah. Yeah, 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 how good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. Uh, I'm Peter and Mommy, I've been watching the lawn. <laughs> but she's got to be the only person brave enough to take on that job. Well done, her. Sure. Um, boys, France against South Africa, which is going to be insane. Um, I actually think France will beat South Africa relatively easily. Hold on. In front of their home crowd, they're almost as powerful as them up front, have a better goal kicker, irrespective of who will goal kick for South Africa. And behind the scrum, they have more firepower better drilled and more imaginative than the box. That, those are big statements. I'm going to fight straight to you. What do you reckon? I just think in these quarterfinal games, it's it's a different level of uh, concentration, energy. The whole the whole mindset and the whole preparation is is slightly different to the pool games, right? Because it's like it's, it's all or nothing now. And um, I just feel that with those kind of games, South Africa, although this French team has been going for the last four years and building, right? So it's been a, a team in construction and they've come very far and also been doing really well. So I just feel that mentally there's just a little edge and they could p potentially say, oh, we'll use the home crowd, we'll use the energy and they will definitely. But I think if South Africa, I mentioned it before, but I think if South Africa can just stick to their plan, the plan that they know, you know, playing the right places, keeping them down there, physicality, mass phys physicality and subdue them for those first 20 minutes, then it's going to be a little bit of doubt, right? And then also like DuPont, how much of a, they've been speculating so much about that situation. He had a cracked uh, bone here. So how is he going to, is he going to come off the bench? Is he going to start the game? What's going to happen? So that's also creating a bit of, you know, this psychological uh, effect on the team itself. So... So yeah, I, I feel I feel it's going to be a very very um, uh, like an incredible game, but I also just feel that uh, Africa's got what it takes to kind of like subdue them. If they do that, then they will be subdued. If not, then the French flair will come back, and we may see we may see France taking it. Tonight. It's going to be some spectacle. One boy that has stood out that we didn't know too much about pre-comp is Louis Biaibari, the young winger made his debut during the competition. He has been insane. You also made your debut age twenty one against the ABs. What was that like as a youngster against that type of quality of opposition? Yeah, mate, that's like, uh, yeah, being selected straight from the 20 and 21 tournament into the, into that match. Um, yeah, I just remember sitting on the sideline thinking, mate, if you get on here, just seriously <laughs> tackle and rack and do the basics, mate. That's all you got to do. Hit one or two racks and just tackle. So it was raining and Fortunately, I was like looking at the players and it was like Justin Marshall, Tane Randall, John Alomu, the late John Alomu, and just thinking, man, these are all like my heroes, right? And then eventually getting on with like, I think 18 minutes to go. It was just surreal, surreal experience. Yeah, so for these lads, that's what I wanted to say. If they knew the opportunity that they have on the world's greatest stage and they could be aware of it, Oh my gosh, they would be pinching themselves right now. We've had loads of reactions to Fiji actually. To be honest, in general, that group pool 
was by far the most entertaining one in this World Cup and probably followed by Group D. Portugal showed a lot of talent, loads of effort, and they played, in my opinion, a very high level of skill when it comes to tackling, ball handling, nerve-wracking games from start to end in that pool. What did you make of the pool and the level of competition, given some of them are semi-pro or amateur players across the board? Was that the best pool to follow? Well, aren't they captained by a dentist or something like that? Like, <laughs> you know, like it's it's unheard of in the you know professional game when you look at top top tier nation because it's their job. Some of these guys are, are training a couple times a week and going to work. It's unbelievable. It just shows that. Uh, the level of, of rugby is developing so well in those lower nations. And they just need games now. They just need to be playing all the time to develop them even even more. And, you know, we've seen it was exciting games. Um, you know, everyone looked at the pools, obviously looked at the top guys that have gone through and think, oh, they had an easy pool. And and they did. But, geez, they, the other the little nations fought. They fought so hard and gave us some brilliant opportunities to see these guys Put on the put on their jersey and just seeing the emotion, how much it means to them to play for their country and to play with their mates. Some of the tries they scored were fantastic. It was brilliant to watch. Yeah, they were exceptional. The last word is on Scotland, and I'm not going to say a word. Uh, <laughs> really disappointing. Said after the game in the Six Nations that Ireland just looked a level above, and they really showed it again this evening. Frustratingly, we kept them close in the spring for 60 minutes, but let them run away with it in the first half today. They absolutely destroyed us in the first half of the game. What are your thoughts on Scotland's tournament and that final game against Ireland? Look, I really thought Scotland were going to have a good World Cup. Um, the, the talent that they had in their group and the way they were playing um, at club level and some of the warm-up games, I really thought they were going, I was really disappointed the way they played. And you even look at their last game, they had loads of possession, but it was just, there was no punch. There was no gain line. It was side to side, you know, just back and forth, all looked nice and pretty, but just did not break the gain line, did not put any pressure on the opposition um, to, to make the defence go back and retreat and retreat. And they just looked like they ended up losing because of that. They just lacked lack that um, punch up front, I think. And also in the backs are a little bit lateral. Um, really disappointing because I really thought they were going to, uh, and I, I really thought they were going to beat Ireland. I thought it was going to be, I was like, there hasn't really been an upset this World Cup. And uh, I've had a few Irish mates on going, you're going to lose this game. But they had uh, no answers. Thank you very much for your opinions. The Reddit forum is open. Everyone back home, you can keep chucking your ideas in. We'll keep pitching them to the players. Scotland have gone home amongst a bunch of others that have exited the pool stages. We're going to take a look back at some of their best moments. Some incredible rugby played by those teams, some big moments as well. Who were you most impressed by? I mean, I just think that like Portugal, they're extremely well for what they've been granted, if that makes sense. Like not playing a regular international season beforehand, potentially playing lesser games and coming into this competition with not a fully pro team and giving some scintillating moments uh, like last night against the Fijians. Nico? Yeah, I'll go Portugal too. I think um, they graduate, like started for the first uh, game. They build it up, build it up. And then the, la the, the second last game, I heard the captain was having an interview and he say something, uh, we're really glad we are here. We're trying our best to be here. Mm. And one thing that we're going to try to show the world that our performance against Fiji for next week. So mm. for that to be happen, I think I'll give credit to the, the Portugal boys. It's a full house, Portugal. They weren't even supposed to be at the World Cup. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. because of Spain uh, fielding an ineligible player, they got uh, granted access to the World Cup and they showed that they should have been here. 
and they were meant to be here. And just some of those players and what it meant to them and the, the rugby they showed us was just awesome. Like I loved it, really loved it. They were exceptional. Right, boys, we've reached the last segment, the fantasy wall. We've had a few hundred thousand people sign up for the game during the competition. It's absolutely flying. But now they're relying on you. You've got to tell them if you're going to bench or start some of these superstars during the quarterfinals. There's a few rule tweaks as well. Players can now have 115 in budget and they can choose four players from each nation. So a little bit different for the quarterfinals. But we're going to get started. The first game is Wales-Argentina and a big winger clash. So you can have... So from Wales, you can have... Lewis Reese Zammett, outside back, wing, absolutely flying. 81 points against Georgia. That was his best so far. 181 points in total. He's got a value of eight. Or do you go Matteo Carreras, who was absolutely ridiculous against Japan. 83 points in that game. 143 in total, a value of seven. Which boy would you start and how would you bench? Carreras will start for me. I think he's just got a little bit more uh, something about him. I've played against him. He's a little bugger to can tackle. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I would start Carreras uh, and beach, uh, bench uh, Louis Rim Samet. Agree? Disagree? You're torn. Yeah. yeah he... So I think uh, Riz to start. Um, I think they both they both have a good athletic. To be fair, they both fast. Um, on one-on-one, -on -one, bet your skills, cake or stab. That's why I'm going to go for race. I'm looking at the, the value here. You know, you, you're saying value seven for careers? Yep. And value eight? Yep. But you've both made your votes. Joe, you ran in a pile of tries for too long <laughs> yeah. on the wing. And they've really stuck you in it. Mate, you get the casting vote. Who are you I going for? I'm going to go for careers, yeah. Why so? What, what's impressed you more? With Carreras than Reece Samet. I don't know. I just felt, felt like uh, watching yesterday. I just it was something, as um, Jimmy said, there's some something there extra. As a small guy, but he can step the hell out of any anyone. So I would say that, yeah, that kind of X factor on your wing. I like that. Stardust. Okay, so Carreras is coming to start, and Reece Samet, unfortunately, is getting benched. Next. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm coming to you last on this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Two worldies. Johnny Sexton. Oh. Richie easy, Moanga. Easy. Richie, 51 points in his last game against Uruguay, 140 in total, a value of 13. Or Johnny Sexton, 32 points against Scotland, 142 in total. Value of 13. He's the most expensive player in the game alongside Matthew Jalibert. Joe, I'm coming to you first. Who would you have as your 10 and why? It's a tough one because uh, both of them are big match players um, and shown it in the past. But I think I'm going to go with Johnny just for overall experience in that Irish team. Nico? I respect Johnny Saxton. Too much. Uh, too much. Too I much. mean, not, no. not too much, because <laughs> I'm right not going to put it in. <laughs> well, I know Richie, my Naita. I think uh, they both can control the game, okay? They both good at seize pace to put the ball on. But I think I'm going to go. I'm not thinking. I'm going to go for a Richie. And I love your style, which means Jimmy, the deciding vote, mate. Which my way are you going? This is so close, isn't it? And obviously, fantasy is all about points. Mm -hmm. Who's going to get the most? Mm. Oh, this is this is I'm on the fence here because, just like um, Nico said there, uh, Richie's got the potential to score tries, but so is Johnny. He scores a lot of tries. Nah, I'm going with the heart. Richie Moanga. Yes! 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 Oh, he, knew, he knew he was always going with that. <laughs> always from the very beginning. <laughs> Um, Sorry, Omar. Hey, been... <laughs> it's, it's a big call and it's going to be yeah. a huge game. Right. Next one, Clash of the Titans. We've spoken about these boys already. Oh. Nico, I'm coming to you last already, my friend. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. Yeesh. Two of the players of the tournament so far, Josh Tuasova and Manu Tualangi. Joe, what do you reckon? Uh, Joshua, Joshua, when he played, he played at, at Toulon, he came as a 19-year-old. And just, yeah, what a, an amazing heart this man has and just incredible, incredible player. Um, and and it's, it's crazy because he's actually got so much bigger. They used to call him in here yeah, in France, call him Quisova, which means like massive thighs because he's just like legs. But you know, I think I'm going to, obviously, manitoulagi has got like a, a hang of a lot of experience and he's been, I mean, he must be up at 80 caps right now. I'm not sure, like, but really high. So from an experience point of view, I like him, but I like Josh for the, yeah, just the, the overall uh, younger kind of Manitoulagi. And I'll give you the breakdown. Josh, 21 points in defeat to Portugal, 128 points in total, value of eight. Manu, 32 points in the win over Fiji, 61 points in total, a value of 7.5. So who are you benching? Who are you starting? So I'm going to start Joshua. Okay. Yeah. Fiji. Jimmy? Yep. Starting Josh, Joshua. Uh, I think he, it, by his own accord, he had a pretty poor game last week and he'll be ready to fight back. Uh, he's going to be devastating. So... Start Sadam and Manu on the bench. Nico. Sorry, Manu. Decision done. <laughs> uh, of course. Two <laughs> Sova. <laughs> it's not a hard decision. Oh, sorry. Was... That bench is looking pretty bloody. Loaded. <laughs> That's bench. Last so one. Good. Last one. And this is going to be absolutely Huge. crucial this weekend. Oh. We got the faster. Oh, this is going to be huge. The faster, Faf de Clerc, 34 points in total, value of 9.5, and Antoine Dupont. Despite only playing two games, he's already racked up 134 points. He's got a value of 11. Will wow. he be fit enough? Will he start? I don't think they're going to bench him. If he's involved, he has to start, you would think. And can they win without him? That's the big question. So who would you start? Who would you bench and why? Joe, I'm going to go you first as well. Okay, yeah, no, I think that's a really tough one. Um, yeah, I'm not sure in terms of his health and where he's at, like, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, how he's going to be feeling with that kind of injury. Um, obviously, Faf is uh, a little pit bull um, and especially gets that ball going as well. Both of them, actually, they're both on the same level, right? But I think... Um, yeah, just because of the injury, I would say I'd go with Faf. Yeah. Jimmy. Jimmy. Nico, I'm going to leave you to last, my friend. Jimmy? Well, I know who I would start, but this is a fantasy game, right? Mm -hmm. And you get points for them being on the pitch. Mm -hmm. I know who exactly Southern are going to target. How long is he going to last on the pitch? Mm -hmm. So in my heart, in my mind, I would start to punt. But for fantasy people out there, I think you're going to have, probably going to have more buck uh, money, like buck for your money. What a buck Bang money? for your buck. Is that, that's what we're getting there. Bang, Bang for your buck. Yeah. With Fuff starting. <laughs> Nico? I think I'll go like the same idea. Uh, I'll go for Fuff. Okay, unanimous. Wow. So fast starts and Toto, unfortunately. Full house. Hits wow. the bench. There we have it. Experts pick for the quarterfinals of fantasy. Before we let you boys go, I have to ask you, can you please pick me a winner? Who do you each think is going to win this competition and why? Joe? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm putting us on the spot, right? Um, I want to say South African New Zealand final. Um, that's just what my heart says. But yeah, obviously, obviously the team, form team at the moment, you're looking at Ireland and France, those two teams are really on top form. So, I mean, any one of those can be in the final two. So, but obviously my heart is green and I want to go with South Africa that they, they come through and they take it. Nico, who do you think can go all the way? Before the World Cup, my prediction was New Zealand gonna last at the pool game against France and they will meet again on the final and New Zealand will win. <sighs> Split. Two from three, right. Jimmy? Three. Look, I, I'm going to say Joe here, I think it's going to be New Zealand and South Africa final. 
Uh, I think South Africa going to suffocate and physically dominate um, Fiji. Uh, sorry, um, Fiji. <laughs> Physi- Baby, oh, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> no, I think fr- uh, South Africa going to physically dominate, um, <laughs> dominate France. Um, and I reckon New Zealand will beat South Africa in the final. All South African, uh, all South African, all Southern Hemisphere final. There That's it is. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you very much, boys. Jimmy, Nico and Joe, thank you very much for your time and joining us. That was another episode of Rugby After Hours. And remember, you can catch up on all your content on the Rugby World Cup channels and on Rugby Pass TV. We'll catch you next week.